Hello everyone, this is Bob Rauner. John asked me to record this order for you for your meeting on fitness and academic achievement. I think activity in schools really needs to be broken down into three different categories, recess, PE, and classroom breaks. Each has its own unique contribution and should be thought of separately. Recess, uh, one of the biggest things that is missed and that people don't realize in recess is that recess is essential for kids' uh, cognitive and social development. Uh, play on the playground requires a little bit of improvisation, negotiation of rules, uh, and so this is uh, something that is often overlooked. Obviously, if people are playing active games, they get some uh, physical benefits for this, but also I think helps uh, peruse some of the acting out in classrooms, which is becoming a common issue. Physical education also has its own unique contribution, especially around skills development. So there's things that you get out of recess but that you're not going to get uh, in physical activity and vice versa. Uh, so physical education in fee class does require some skills development. It's hard to be successful in a sport unless you know what the rules are. Also, it's hard to discover uh, what you're really good at, what you enjoy, until you're exposed to a large variety of, of different uh, sports and, and how to play them. I think there's also getting to be more and more research showing that, uh, that the activity uh, reduces behavior issues, especially in young boys. And so I think it's not really just not reasonable to expect a kid to sit all day without the adequate recess, PE, and activity breaks. Uh, I'd have to say that myself. I can't sit that long either, so I don't, think, I don't think it's reasonable to expect our kids to sit all day either. This is a, something we published on uh, with LPS data. Uh, Mary Bell Avery, some of you may know, uh, from Lincoln Public Schools, as well as Teresa Wanser, who lives in, works in the evaluation department. Basically, we've published a study on our uh, fitness levels in our 4th or 8th Street kids and how it affected math and reading. Theatrics was that to improve academic performance, the school system should focus on aerobic fitness of every student. Uh, we've run this data multiple years. Essentially, if you look at the kids who pass the fitness gram pacer, and that's what we're defining fit as, um, you'll see higher scores in reading, math, and science. We actually ran it on uh, writing one year. It was even a bigger uh, improvement. However, unfortunately, because of some issues with the NISA test, the writing test was thrown out. Uh, but you see this across the board. Uh, if you break this down by gender, by ethnicity, by income status, you see essentially the same results. And there's even what we call a dose response curve in, in, in medicine. And so the more laps you get, the better the academic achievement. This was pulled from another study uh, published and we re-ran the number with our own data. Um, to give you some perspective, the, that fitness level of, of kids is set at around 20 to 25 laps in fifth graders, but we actually saw increasing academic scores even when uh, students were at two and three times that. So there's a benefit of more fitness uh, on both math, reading, and science. So essentially summarizing, sacrificing P and recess time to increase math and reading time is likely counterproductive. And what is, what is adequate? Uh, so the healthy school environment should have at least 150 minutes of PE a week. Uh, and a lot of Nebraska schools are, are woefully behind on this. Uh, in Lincoln, we're probably averaging around 40 to 80 minutes. So, and so this is something that needs to be changed in our curriculum if we run healthy and successful kids. So activity in schools, you really need to look at that each of these groups has some unique contributions. For recess, it's the social development. For PE, there's some skills and fitness that is more likely to happen in PE. In classroom breaks, it's a combination of benefit of attention and behavior. Switching gears a little bit, I think it's also to talk about the dollars and cents of this. This article came out uh, about two months ago uh, where they model the economic impact of improving uh, children's physical activity. Uh, importantly, this is 8 to 11 year olds, so your elementary age kids. They were basically studied if these kids develop these skills and, uh, and habits of being physically active at this age group, uh, what it would do throughout the course of their lifetime, what the net effects would be. The summary is that. Uh, uh, basically, no matter what your weight, uh, increasing fitness made a big difference in reducing both medical, both medical care costs and with lost productivity, and those benefits increased uh, with overweight and obese kids, but even benefited the normal weight kids as well. The summary of the article is if all elementary students were active, we'd have about a 50% reduction in the number of kids that are overweight and obese. We'd save uh, over $51 billion a year in direct medical costs. We'd save $69 billion a year in lost, lost productivity. Uh, with hundreds of thousands of fewer strokes, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, and cancer. Uh, to the local level, I work do some uh, health care consulting with a local manufacturer and their health benefits. Uh, this manufacturer has about 1,000 covered lives, if you include their employees, spouses, and kids. Of those 1,000, 39 have diabetes, and those 39 diabetics are responsible for 15 to 20 percent of the company's health care costs. That company pays more for health care costs of just their diabetics than it pays for its entire property taxes each year. 
And so I think one thing to put this in perspective is you guys, uh, of course, know that your schools are primarily funded through property taxes uh, from local companies and, and, and individuals. Um, maybe there's a little quid pro quo here. If you want them to fund your schools adequately with their property taxes, maybe you should uh, reciprocate by providing them healthy employees by keeping your kids' uh, students more fit when they graduate. And of course, most importantly, it's for the benefit of our kids. That's why we're all here. Uh, this is a little summary slide of our, our improvements in Lincoln Public Schools. We're reducing obesity and increasing fitness uh, with our projects. Uh, I have to be honest and say that Kearney Public Schools has even better results than we do. Uh, so this works if schools do focus on, on fitness and, and healthy weight. Uh, if you like a little more overview, there's a, a great book by it called Brain Rules by John Medina, uh, where he studies the, a number of things that help uh, everybody in both work, home, and school. And his first chapter is on exercise and fitness, how much it affects uh, school's academic achievement and then even lighter than lifespan reductions and things like dementia and Alzheimer's. Uh, so it's worth a read if you have, have some time. If you have any questions, send me an email. And hopefully this helps your discussions.